I will talk to you of art. Yes. For there is nothing else. Are you all ready to join me today in our trip to outer space? Come along quietly or not. Well, you can have all the talent in the world and never get anywhere. Some artists will bait a hook and let you bite upon it. And now, without further ado... Hello folks, another episode of Planet Shivers. I'm Albert Shivers, and on this episode today... I'm going to be talking with another college buddy of mine, Andrew Confair. A modest, a modest man, but can really light it up when he gets on stage. I, in a non-professional realm, I've probably not seen somebody who can envelop a character on stage the way Andrew Confair does. Before we get to him, just some little bit of news. I've got some new art cards floating around, um, one of which is for the podcast. The other um, features my portrait of French actress Beatrice Dolly. So those will be floating around, and you can find them. One of the places you can find them is at Gamut Art Gallery here in Strasbourg, which brings me to number two on my list. Um, right now, hanging there is my collage, Boilerworks Follies which is sort of a spooky rendition of the Zegfield Follies, but in a more kind of dark way. You know, it it portrays a few of the characters from the Zegfield Follies as ghosts in an abandoned building. You can see that at Gamut Art Gallery in Strasbourg, as well as some other really cool artists who may be coming on the show soon. Um, also, I um, keep prepping for the erotic art show in New York that I'll be involved with. I'm going to have more details on that. I just finished the first piece of four that I'll be doing for the show. And the theme for my four pieces, which wasn't um, required for an artist to theme all their pieces, but I decided to come up with a theme, something to connect them all in a, in a way. So each of the four pieces somehow will be breaking the fourth wall. In other words, it'll have that Mona Lisa effect of the subject in the piece looking at the viewer, making eye contact, and the eyes will follow you. Uh, I find that kind of a fun challenge to do when I'm doing portraits. So I think that would be cool, especially for an erotic art show. Uh, Also, my art is still available on firstdibs.com. I want to thank Roz for hooking me up with that. Um, There's a lot of pieces on there. I've lost count at this point. Um, I know my Dorothy Donegan portrait's on there. My Frank Zappa portrait is on there. And many others, really. Um, There's a couple of collages. My Frankenstein wedding, um, titled Wedding of the Century. That's on there. And many others. And if you order them, I'll be the one sending them to you. And I will throw in goodies. So keep that in mind. Go on First Dibs. Type in Albert Shivers. My work will come up. And if you decide to buy a piece, eh, you might get a little extra goodies. And also for any of the artist friends out there who don't already know this, um, AC Moore is closing. They're having big sales all over the place. I just picked up some frames the other day. Um, Everything is somewhat off some percentage off 20 percent, 50 percent, 75 percent so if you're looking for art supplies you can go i went to the one by me and it was pretty ransacked is in terms of like art supplies like i was looking for micron pens and other kind of like super fine point pens or ink and they were pretty much gone except for like the cheapo markers so it seems like some other artists got there ahead of me, but that's fine. Uh, I was able to pick up some frames, those those low profile pop them in the front frames, which I tend to like, especially for hanging up around the apartment. And a lot of galleries like them too. They have the hole in the back, you hang them right up. You don't have to worry about string or nails or anything like that. So, or like, you know, damaging a possible really cool frame. So those are all there hanging out. For cheap, and those are cheap anyway, but they're even more cheap with the price off. Maybe I'm just being a bargain hunter. I don't know. Lastly, 
don't forget that you could support this podcast, my art, Isaac Soundwork, on Patreon. If you go on Patreon and type in Albert Shivers Artist, there's information there on the podcast, information there on my art. And um, if you feel so inclined, you could contribute to help build this show, which would be very, very much appreciated. One last thing before we get to Andrew. Um, He is currently in a production of It's a Wonderful Life. Now, although many of the shows, just due to scheduling and the release of this show, um, a few of the performances have passed already. The shows you can go to are tonight, Friday the 13th, at 7.30 p.m., tomorrow, December 14th, at 7.30 p.m., and Sunday, December 15th, at 2 p.m. That's a matinee. And it is the Community Theater League at 100 West 3rd Street in Williamsport, PA. I know for a fact that Andrew's performance will be great. And I'm sure the other actors in the show are up to speed as well. This is an interesting interview. Uh, Andrew and I hadn't seen each other in a couple of years, probably. Um, So we really didn't cover all the ground. We were kind of clinched on time we didn't cover all the ground we wanted to um but we talk a lot about andrew's interest in acting why he wants to act and why he still acts you know there's something about i feel like especially with actors more so than even artists you know you have people who go to college for it or not andrew was not an acting major in college but it was just a love for him You have these people who study it, do it in college, do it in high school, but they still act on the side. And even if you're acting on the side, a lot goes into that. You have rehearsals, dress rehearsals, learning your lines, being in the production, all of which has to be worked around your regular life. You know, you still, these people still have a regular job that they're doing. And I, I, hmm, I can appreciate that level of commitment. And all artistic people do it. Musicians play shows and have a real job and rehearse. Artists have a regular job and draw on the side. And although it can be very cheesy and the actors can at times be very cheesy, there are gems among them and I feel like Andrew is one of those gems and I've seen him in a few shows he's been in a movie of mine and he fully commits himself to whatever role he's in and he can totally transform into that character but this interview is just having a conversation so I hope you enjoy it get something out of it and yes don't forget that information on it's a wonderful life in williamsport pa if you're in that area or you want to go to that area see a play uh it should be good so yep let's get to andrew Alrighty, folks, it is another episode of the Planet Shivers podcast. I'm Albert Shivers. Um, Isaac Wilson on sound can't be with us today, but we're going to try to make do without him, although it's tough. Um, And I'm sitting here today with actor and great friend Andrew Confer. Thank you for having me. You are the third kind of college buddy of mine that I've pulled into this show, and I've enjoyed having you guys here because it's like a different, it's a more personal kind of conversation and experience. Two kids from opposite ends of the world almost Mm. ended up, you know, meeting over theater in the theater department. So I guess we'll let's start with like what was your interest in getting involved in theater? Well, Al, I've always had a, well, since, well, I was really little. Now, I, uh, uh, you know, back in, you know, elementary school, you know, we had a 
you know, and they would have us do like little skits and stuff. Uh, you know, like we would act out uh, little like nursery uh, rhymes, like uh, little uh, little Red Riding Hood and uh, Three Little Pigs, Three Three Billy Goats Gruff, I think it's called. Okay. Uh, about the three billy goats and you have the troll underneath the bridge mm -hmm. and uh i played the uh the troll underneath the bridge okay and you know and i uh i just remember how much uh, f uh fun that was because uh i uh you know, and then we did you know more uh I, I did some other shows you know throughout school you know into high school i got involved with the uh, local community theater, you know, in uh, uh, Williamsport, uh, uh, where I'm from, and uh, and they have a really great theater uh, art program uh, right. over there, which I, I think is great. They have, and I think it's gotten even better to tell you the truth, especially for uh, the uh, young, the youth, and it, it's something I always love doing. You know, uh, you know then you know. My, once I got into high school, I got more into sports, and right. then, you know, you had to do, uh, you know, you had to, you know, when you did sports, you had to commit yourself completely. Fully, yeah. yeah. You, you had to, you know, go to the gym constantly, you know, work out constantly, go to all the practices. But then, you know, once the season was over, then I could do uh, theater. When I was in high school, you know, I was, you know, my thought process was, you know, I was going to go, uh, go to college and do sports and I was going to, you know, try to get a scholarship or in the end that didn't turn out how, you know, everybody, you know, how I was thinking and I just went, you know, just to go to school. But, you know, and I thought, you know, theater was just going to be this thing that, you know, I just, you know, enjoy doing, you know, like a yeah. hobby, you know, I, uh, and you you know uh, especially you know being an artist you know you know, you have that you have that you know it's like a feeling inside mm -hmm. you that you can't you know it's uh you need an outlet and uh, you know and you know for an actor you know you can go see theater you can watch movies you can watch TV read plays read books all you want but you have to do it. You know, right. you, you know, there's only, you know, so, so much time that you can walk around your room reading a play mm -hmm. that, you know, until you, you know, people start looking at you like you're crazy. When I got to East Stroudsburg, I, you know, I wasn't sure how I, how I, you know, because I wasn't a major. I, right. I wasn't, you know, uh, uh, I wasn't even a minor at the time. I just, uh, uh, you know, but... I was going through Stroud Hall, and mm -hmm. I saw a poster for open auditions, and I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to give it a shot, because if I don't do something soon, I'm going to go nuts. Right. Because uh, I, I need that, that outlet. So I, I went, you know, and this was my freshman year, and uh, you know, I went, you know, and everybody, and the thing that really surprised me out was how inviting everybody was mm -hmm. you know I thought you know oh I'm gonna get the cold shoulder being a, a non-major you know they're not gonna right. they're not you know, they're just gonna pass me off you know even the audition though will be an outlet though right it, even even if they you know uh, you know snub me you know I'll get you know you know I'll get to you know at least be on stage for you know the however long the audition was mm -hmm. so I went and like I like I said everybody was very welcoming inviting I didn't have a copy of the script I said here's a copy of the script you know and uh, you know everybody was you know you know we uh, worked together during the audition you know and uh, the uh, uh, I ended up getting a call back and uh, you know and the the uh, the, the callback was, you know, just as fun as the audition. And I said, okay, if I don't, don't get the part, you know, at least I'm, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I have an outlet, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, I ended up getting a part. And, you know, it was a lot of fun. You know, I got to meet, you know, all the, you know, 
uh, theater, you know, who became, you know, my my friends throughout right. my whole, you know, you know, my whole. For- I think I had more friends to, in the theater program than I did in my actual major. Yeah. And I I had you know friends, but it was mostly you know people that we work on projects together. Right. But you know we weren't you know back slapping buddies. You know? Gotcha. Mm. And uh, then you know I got involved with. Uh, uh, you know, stage two, and you know, uh, because the next thing I auditioned for was the one act plays, mm-hmm. and uh, and I ended up getting a part with that, you know, and you know, that's how me and uh, Luke and Amanda and Angelo, and mm-hmm. you know, we you know, that whole group because Amanda was our director, okay. and uh, Luke had a part, and uh, Angelo had a part in it, and uh, uh, Merv, Mer, uh, okay. Mervon, yeah, uh, had a had a part in it, and we all uh, uh, worked together good, and it was a really great time. Mm. Yeah, and it got to be you know like, but I never wanted to change my change my major though. I uh, I never I just wanted to uh, because you know as much as I love theater, you know I still enjoyed my major right it was what i what i was really good at and uh but i i and i didn't want to be a double major because i thought that'd be you know too strong and i didn't want right. to have to be in school or pay to go to school any longer than i had to right and so i talked to steph about being a minor you know which was a lot less uh uh, a lot less stress on it. What was what was that one act that you were in? Oh, <laughs> I knew you were gonna ask that. And I, That's uh, right. Uh, 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 it was had something to do with uh, uh, I, I want to say it's had uh the the word moon in the okay in the title uh, i i ask only like so to establish a bit of a timeline because so this definitely was before i started getting involved because mm. i don't rec- i don't memories recall of the moon it. that's what it was called Sorry. okay no it's fine memories of the moon yeah okay so i don't i don't recall that so just so i kind of get where mm-hmm. where things are at yeah so I take it like so. You you were you were in this play, and obviously you enjoyed being in it. Oh yeah, enough to stick around. Oh yeah, mm. I you know I was I I, I have a good day job Al, and right. I, I love it. You know I love the people that I work with, but uh, as much as that, you know I I, I love being an actor. Uh, yeah, I love you know uh, I, I love the creative end of it. I love. Uh, you know, uh, being on stage or in front of a camera, and you know, I, I wish you know, you know, I, I don't necessarily wish that I could be a famous actor. You know, right. but I wish I could pay my bills at being right. an actor, if that makes. Yeah, I, I wish yeah. I, if I could make as much money being an actor as I do as my day job, you know, mm. I, I'd be, you know, I'd be the happiest person. Ever. You know, you know, and I really think acting is the fountain of youth. I really do. You know, because. Uh, you know, I'll I'll wake up in the morning, you know, and you know I'll be you know stiff and you know, you know hurting you and that you know I have to do stretches now and uh, you know uh, you know but you know once you know I get on stage or you know in front you know like I'm a kid again, you know I'm 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 rolling around on the stage I'm you know you know uh. You know, uh, I'm flying all around, you know, jumping and running and, you know, I mean, of course, the next day, you know, I can barely get out of bed, but, you know, <laughs> you know, but for that brief moment, you know, um, you know, I'm, it just, it just is indescribable. Right. Yeah. So let's, let's, we'll jump ahead a little bit. Um, so I came up with an idea for a, a, a voodoo movie mm-hmm. and, um. I needed somebody intimidating to play the part of Nathaniel. So um, that movie 
was probably like I I always look at it as like me kind of like figuring it out and then finally like figuring it out. Mm-hmm. You you know and you you did a very good job. Mm-hmm. I know you know I, I'm sure it wasn't looking back on it. I'm sure it wasn't the ideal role that you maybe would have wanted to be playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I understand that yeah. now more so than then. But, um, man, you did, and going back to what you said before, you did not phone it in. Uh, you went all in on that one. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah that, uh, and you know, looking back, you know, I'm, because you were working on, and, you know, just, you know, for everybody listening, uh, the, uh, all these projects are on my resume, by the way. Mm-hmm. I, I, I still, I, I'm very proud of them. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, 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 we were uh, just uh, be- because you were working on uh, four, uh, yeah, four. Indivi- individual uh, projects, yeah. and you were telling me about them. And uh, you know, you said you know like this one is about this, this one's about that, this one's about this. I, th- I think I was working on a show too at the same time, mm-hmm. I, uh, and you uh, kind of said, you know, I, I really, I really think you'd be good, uh, this one, you know, and I, and I read it and, you know, I kind of absorbed it, you know, I think you were, we actually read it together. Yeah. You know, and uh, that was, that worked nice for me because, you know, I could, you know, ask you questions and I think one of the questions, uh, I, I asked you was, uh, I think because the, the ending thing was, uh, the, the priestess is told that she's going to have a child. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I remember asking you after I read it, did, was she really going to have a child? Because, <laughs> uh, uh, or, or was it just made up? Cause, right. Yeah. And, uh, I, I remember that, that was, a uh, that was definitely a, a fun time because you had all those other people there that, yeah. you know, that made it, you know, uh, uh, even, you know. Who were who really got into it? Yeah. You know, they they didn't phone it in either. No, you know? no, nobody. Yeah, yeah. And it, it filled out the the scene. It was, yeah, it was very very yeah. fun and, and strange. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the real quick, like the the, the 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 funny thing about that movie is I ended up putting it on YouTube and it sat there, mm-hmm. and it sat there, yeah. and all of a sudden I start getting Facebook friend requests from teenagers. Like high school aged kids from Africa, uh, and I'm like, what is happening? Uh, like, what, what? And it, they, some kid over there, stumbled across our movie. Oh wow! Oh man! On YouTube and thought it was a comedy. Oh yeah. So I just like, all right, it's a comedy. Good. <laughs> I don't care if you you like it, you like it. Yeah, you like it. However you find it. And um, so the one I don't know who the first the first one was, but whoever it was, showed it to friends. Mm. Like, look at this funny movie. Uh. And um, it ended up like most of the views it's it's accumulated was through that. Oh yeah. Of, and like passing it around their school, uh, so you'd never know oh, yeah. what's gonna happen. Yeah, definitely. And uh, you know, going going back to you know, just to touch on that a little bit more because I wasn't uh, fully in character when I got there. Right. Uh, you know, because I just came up with you. You know, I was just I was I think I was carrying a box or something, yeah. and I was helping you like clean out. So all those people that I brought up earlier. They thought I was just your your uh, assistant. They didn't know that I was in the uh, right. That I was actually in it. And then uh, you know when my first entrance, yeah, like, uh, I think because I was like standing behind a tree or something. Like nobody yeah. like really took notice of me. Uh, uh, you know, I came I came out in my costume and like all all those all those all your your friends all those or people that you had in the yeah. were just like oh my. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you was you had quite the entrance. Uh, basically, my costume was uh, 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 cut off pants and mm-hmm. cut off shirt, and it was covered in blood. Yeah, and uh, so it was quite the sight. <laughs> yeah, 
And you, yeah, you, you, you were, you know, uh, in some yeah. sense, the executioner, in a yeah, way. In a way, yeah. Just dragging people off into the woods. Yeah. Because uh, 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 the, the first, uh, uh, the one, because, you know, my first entrance was taking a girl to uh, be executed. Mm-hmm. And I, I took, and we hadn't rehearsed or anything. Right. Had, I didn't, she didn't know yeah. me. I, that, I, that morning was was um, the lead actress was late. Uh-huh. She missed her first bus, mm-hmm. so that morning was just chaos because everything ha- everything was um, late by an hour. Uh-huh. So and I you know I have all these people, yeah. you the, the main actors, um, and then all the extra people all uh-huh. just sitting around waiting. Yeah. So like. I was just running around like crazy trying yeah. to figure out we didn't have the opportunity to rehearse yeah. was taken away from us. Exactly, yeah, because it was getting because it was outside and yeah, we, you know, we, we were depending all about sunlight and yeah. good weather and yeah, and uh, and that was another. I was afraid I'd have to uh, pick her up and throw her over my shoulder right. because I uh, 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 because because you know she's one of the ones that gave me that. That look, yeah, it was just like, and uh, <laughs> and I was trying to get, and she wouldn't go with me, so, right? So I had to, you know, kind of pretty much uh, drag her, right? And because, uh, uh, you know, later, later, you know, I we talked, and you know, she knew that I was a normal guy, and right? All that, and, you know, that was because <laughs> I, because I didn't know what you wanted me to, right. to do, so I just kind of tried to walk to, as far out of scene that I could. One other role um, that I wanted to talk to you about. Was um, you played a lot of different roles yeah. when your time at ESU, mm-hmm. um, but one that is, is is I like to hear how it was for you was your role in the play Sold, mm-hmm. which was a play about American slavery. Oh yeah, um, maybe you could go into that a little bit. Well, you know that you know in, in every show that I did at ESU, the cast I always uh, loved working uh, with everybody. We because you know, like, because uh, we were all so close, you know, like I, right. I said, you know, because you know, like when you found out you got cast in a role, you're just like, oh, just, uh, you know, just uh, another group of the family, mm-hmm. you know? and uh, the, uh, uh, it, and, and to, they had the show slated as the kid show, you know, for anybody who doesn't know, at East Stroudsburg, they usually do a kid show they do uh, uh i guess kind of like a musical they do right. a, a musical they do the stage two one acts and then they do uh, I'm, I'm not sure what type of john genre, genre it would be but you know something like uh electra or uh uh, uh i think the one, uh, one year they did uh but you know they usually do the kid show uh uh, musical one X and then this other type. I, and I, uh, I, one thing I've kind of learned is that, uh, you know, surprisingly, kids like me. You know, uh, uh, kid, you know, like I'll do a, a show uh, with kids and we'll have uh, fun. You know, uh, I'll, uh, you know, and you know, I'll do a show for kids and they'll just, you know, they can't. You know they, you know afterwards they do, they want to come up and you know get my autograph and stuff like that and you know we, you know which is you know nice you know which is uh, refreshing because you know when I was a kid you know and I'd see somebody like me I'd usually walk towards the in the other direction you know because mm. uh, but uh, you know which is nice to know that kids are you know are approachable you know don't find you know people you know my size uh, intimidating or scary mm. anymore. You know, is uh, nice. So, uh, so I was excited to be doing the kids show. You know, then you know you start reading into it. You know, and my character, you know, uh, was pretty much you know like the lowest form of white trash redneck scum you could right. uh, imagine. The the guy who was selling the slaves. You know, and. You know, I uh, and I had to say the N word, and I had to 
just act like a total racist. You know, it was pretty much everything that, you know, my parents and everyone, it was pretty much the opposite of everything that they had taught me. Right. You know, they always taught me to be accepting and, you know, they, uh, you know, so that, you know, that was difficult. But, uh, you know, uh, and I went to, and they also had, because I was playing such a creep, Mm-hmm. You know, and I was working with my friends, you know, who, you know, and I had to be so mean and right. cruel to them. You know, one of the things that they wanted me to do was they wanted me to grab, you know, uh, uh, one of the girls, you know, by the backside, you know, right. which, you know, uh, who, you know, is a dear friend of mine. And, you know, and I, uh, uh, it was... And I just felt so, you know, even though she gave me permission, you know, she, she said she was fine with it. You know, you still feel, you know, bad though. Right. Because you're, you're, you know, you're objectifying your, your friend. Yeah. What really, what really helped me play that part was, you know, I went to the director and she, she said, just, uh, remember you're not Andrew. You're, uh, you're, you're a character, right? You know, which you know, that's how I developed, you know, my process into, you know, realizing that I'm a character actor. Mm-hmm. So when I played him, I completely changed everything about me. I changed right. my voice. I changed the way I walked, the way I sat, the way right. I stood. I, uh, you know, which really helped me. You know, you know, so even though I felt bad, you know, I could remember that, you know, I'm not myself. You know, even though, you know, I played, you know, you know, a horrible character, you know, I'm still proud of what, you know, we produced for the the public, you know. Yeah. You know, for, you know, uh, you know, for... The, you know, and I'm proud of the work that we did together as a cast right. and, and a crew. You know, the you know, because I, I you know, that's you know my favorite memories are, you know, working on shows at ESU. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, like I told you, you know, looking through the, the pictures, you know, all the uh nostalgia and mm-hmm. uh I just uh you know uh and I you know, I feel, you know, but you know, and, and I tell them, you know, I I, I loved working with everybody on that show. Yeah, uh, and that kind of... And another thing that helped me with is being accepting of characters, you know, because up to that point, I had always been comedic. You know, I thought, you know, thinking about getting into... Uh, act, when I was acting, you know, in high school and stuff, you know, I, I thought, you know, I'm just going to be uh, the, the comedy guy. You know, I'm... You know, I'm I'm gonna be the guy who comes out and you know slips on a banana and you know and everybody right. laughs. You know, uh, and uh, that uh, you know I'm I'm gonna be the comic relief. You know, but it wasn't you know until I did that show that I saw you know, hey you know maybe I can you know try the other side of the acting, right. you know, the the drama. Or, yeah. You know, maybe I can you know not limit myself just to. You know, trying to make right. people laugh. I feel, I, and I, I seen that play when you guys did it. And just based on what you're saying, I remember your character well. I feel like, and I'm not just saying it, I think you stood out. One of the better, one of the best jobs of the actors in that play. Oh, thank you. Especially knowing you. Oh. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And then seeing what you did. And... There were elements, see, you, I don't feel like that play was a heavy drama, but I don't feel like you totally lost that comedic element because there were elements of that character that was very dark humor mm-hmm. because you were very uh, energetic, you were an energetic auctioneer, mm-hmm. and there was an element of at least from my point of view which is my weird twisted point of view but that was comedic in a very dark way mm. you know it was in there but the way you you know what and I'm you know 
it would be an insult to say that you did it by accident. Mm-hmm. But because I don't think you did, mm-hmm. but it seemed very natural mm-hmm. because you're up there with this role of of a slave auction. You know how much lower can you get? Yeah, really. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So as we're getting um, like towards the end of our time slot here, there's one more th- role I want to ask you about, which is a role that. Didn't end up happening, um, but I'm curious as to your your reason for getting involved in it and the way you perceived it. So, not too long before um, you were done with the issue, mutual friend of ours, Mike, was gonna he was writing a film mm-hmm. and you were gonna star it. Mm-hmm. Now, it was a heavy, it was a heavy film. Mm-hmm. So if you would want to, I'd be curious to hear like what, um, what what made you interested in playing such a role. Well, uh, what well, the thing that I uh, made me interested in playing a role like that was because uh, I can relate, you know, to the to the character. Right, and I guess I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I guess let me just give a little background. Is it your your character was written as um, a friend of yours gets sexually assaulted, mm-hmm. and you are going to sort of avenge her, get you know, get make uh, even the even the, the count, so yeah. to speak. Uh, well, ahead. because you know, uh, I think that's like the worst crime imaginable. You know, I'm very, you know, uh, and you know, uh, you've known me. You know, I'm always very protective of women, especially. I, I think mm-hmm. assault against women is one of the worst crimes a man can ever commit. You know, women and you know assaults against women and children. That's mm-hmm. why I, I can't watch that Law and Order SVU thing because right. you know, it just makes me want to puke. Yeah, every episode. Yeah, really. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I I think uh, and well, actually, it, uh, 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 my character was. Uh, uh, avenging it, and it was also uh, he was also a suspect. Yeah, and uh, which uh, you know I can relate, you know, because you know, and you know, I can only imagine, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, young, you know, freshman uh, woman, mm-hmm. you know, who is on a campus, you know, by you know, away from her family for the first time, you know. And, you know, walking home late at night, you know, they see somebody like me, you know, that can, you know, send itself some, you know, uh, alarms. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, because I, I remember a, uh, specifically a story. I was walking home. It was my very first night class when I was a freshman. I had a, a night. It was a, a six to nine class. Oof. And uh, it didn't, it didn't, uh, it was only once a week. It, it, it the, the professor, he's, he, he's a, you know, he, it was in my majors. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was pretty good about, you know, splitting the time and stuff like that. So gotcha. ended up not, but the, the first class though was, you know, six to nine. And mm-hmm. I was, you know, walking back to my, my dorm, which was, you know, just, you know, a little bit across. And I, remember I was walking behind this, this girl. I didn't really notice her at first. Yeah, because I was, uh, I was putting something in my backpack or something like that, and, uh, and until I saw this, you know, person walk all the way across, it, you know, I guess it was called the quad, you know, the yeah, or, uh, you know, the the grassy area from one side to the other, mm-hmm. and she walked right in the middle of the, the quad. Uh, and I was just like, well, that's weird. Maybe her, her uh, dorm's on that side. I, uh, but I just, I, I, it, but you know, I, f- I forgot about it. You know, then I walked to my, uh, 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 all, all the way, I walked to my dorm. I'm wa- going to the door and, and the, the same girl come and she's just like, and she just said, like, are you following me? And, and, and I, I'm just like, no, I'm just going to my dorm. I live here. And she's just like, Wait, uh, why were you following me? And I was just like, I was just walking back. I was just like, I'm, I'm just, just, I'm just walking. My, t- I, 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 and uh, and she's, uh, she's just like, like, 
and, and she she was she was like shaking, and yeah. and, I, and I I felt bad, right. and uh, so I uh, uh, I said I'm I'm not I'm just just going up to my door I'm, I'm, I have no, and, and she and she well and she's like well you you were following me, and I was just like no no I was just, we were just happened to be walking to the same place, right, uh, and you know then. You know, then while I was reading his, you know, show, you know, and I, I started thinking about, you know, how, you know, they, uh, how, you know, you know, I, you know, I realized, you know, uh, you know, how, how, what her mindset was. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that made me want to do this because it's a person who, you know, who isn't, you know, who's just a, a regular, you know, uh, person, but he gives off the, uh, I guess the, the, the look, the, the, you know, you know, if you're a, you know, a quiet person, you know, who, you know, uh, who doesn't, you know, and, uh, he, uh, uh, you know, you know, doesn't really, you know, you know, and, uh, and one of the lines I, uh, I remember is uh, uh, from that film was, you know, he goes on this huge uh, tangent about you know, you know, women who stay with men who abuse them and stuff like that, and you know, because I think that's that's awful, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know that they, you know. Uh, Stay in uh, relation uh, relationships where there's you know physical, mental abuse, and you know I don't know if it's just because they want to, uh, you know I don't know if they're afraid of you know not you know finding love again or you know, uh, you know that you know really struck because you know I I don't see see why they they because I remember reading that line and I was just like I agree with every word he's saying. Mm. You know, and he says the line, you know, uh, you know, those, those guys should be, you know, thrown in jail or beaten or, uh, and I, I just remember thinking, yeah, right on. Uh, mm. So, so that's really what made me want to play the part. You know, not because he was, it was the main character. I mean, even if he was a minor character, I'd mm. want to play something like that. Mm. And just before we before we wrap up, you're involved in a production of It's a Wonderful Life. Yes, I am. And you play which character? I play Ernie, the cab driver. Cool. Yeah. And that's just being that you gave me the schedule here. Um, that's going to be... Where's it going to be? Community Theater League in Williamsport. And that's Pennsylvania, right? Williamsport, Pennsylvania, Williamsport. yeah. 100, the theater is located at 100 West 3rd Street. And the shows are... December 6th and 7th at 7.30 p.m. The 12th through the 14th at 7.30 p.m. And the 8th and the 15th at 2 p.m. So if 7.30 is too late for you, you can go at 2 and still yeah. see it. Oh, yeah. And How um, uh, you're, uh, you're in, I imagine you're in rehearsals for that right now. Uh, yes, yes, I am. Uh, and uh, again, you know, just like usual, it, it doesn't, uh, disappoint. You know, we have a, a great mix of talent. You know, mm-hmm. we have some people who have been acting for their whole lives, and you know, we have some people who it's their first show. Wow! And, and you know, and uh, run, don't walk to get your tickets because they are going fast. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I hope I hope you get a lot of sellouts. Yeah. yeah me, especially if they're going fast, that'll be good. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it, you know, it can make a. You know, a uh, Christmas present too, if you like. You know, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, her uh, uh, early Christmas present uh, tickets to a show. There you go. <laughs> Can't go Why? wrong with that. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Well, Andrew, I wish you just really good luck for you and the rest of the cast on Wonderful Life. Thank you, Al. And it was so great. I'm so grateful you came out. Uh, you came out to I'll, do this. I'm grateful that you had me, Al. I mean, it's been. What, um, years since we've seen it each has. other, and uh, it's that's too long. We, yeah, yeah, and it's you know great to, you know, great to see you and uh, talk with you. You know, and you know reminisce a little bit. And remember, I was on the ground floor. Remember, you uh, were. I, I was there. True. I was there for the 
I, I don't forget. I don't forget. You're all you're all coming with me. Yeah. When when that ship comes in. <laughs> Thanks again, Andrew. Oh yeah. Thank you. Thanks again for listening to another episode of the Planet Shivers podcast. For myself and Isaac Wilson, you could find my work on Instagram at Albert Shivers. You could find Isaac's work on Instagram at when underscore in underscore zen. Don't forget, you can listen to this episode and more episodes now on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the podcast app, Google Play, SoundCloud, and YouTube. And the episodes with visual artists will have a slideshow of their art. So there's something to look at. You can also support this podcast on Patreon if you type in Albert Shivers Artist. Thanks again for listening. Next week, we're going to have a really cool guest. You will not want to miss it. See you then.